Hello, and welcome to another episode of Cases That Should Have Gone to the Supreme Court of Canada, but didn't. Today, we're talking about prior inconsistent statements. Cases that should have gone to the Supreme Court of Canada, but didn't. Denzel Palmer Koch was charged with sexual assault, and one of the central issues that came up at his trial was an issue of credibility. Although he made a number of admissions that ultimately meant the credibility of the complainant wasn't going to be tested in the case, his credibility was what was on trial in that case. Mr. Palmer Koch was impugned by the court on the basis of a lie that he made to the police at the time of giving a statement. The court essentially relied on a rule that if you give a prior inconsistent statement, that that will negatively impact your ability to uh, be believed later on. The problem is that the rule about prior inconsistent statements really lacks context. And this is what Mr. Palmer Koch uh, argued in his case. He said that the court needs to look into more than just whether or not somebody doled a lie on a previous occasion, but also the context in which they told that lie and their reasons for telling the lie. And this makes perfect sense. People who are pulled over at roadblocks will often lie to the police and say that they didn't have anything to drink. That doesn't necessarily mean they didn't have anything to drink, and police generally don't believe them. When the lie has no bearing on the outcome of how proceedings unfold from there, why should it matter in an ultimate credibility assessment? Mr. Palmer Koch was ultimately charged with the sexual assault. He ultimately stood trial for it. The police didn't believe whatever lie he told them to try and escape those charges. So why was it relevant if he had a contextual explanation as to why he told an untruth at the time? Why was it relevant that he lied? Should the courts not have to consider all of the evidence, including context, before arriving at credibility determinations? Is that not trite law? How does this judgment stand um, when compared with that rule of, of requiring judges to consider all of the evidence? This creates a significant inconsistency in the law that needs to be resolved. And this is the, exactly the type of case that the Supreme Court of Canada is supposed to get into. How do you resolve inconsistent judgments or inconsistent evidentiary rules? And how do judges grapple with those inconsistent judgments and evidentiary rules? The Supreme Court of Canada had an opportunity to say how this is all supposed to work together and particularly in an important context where credibility is a central issue, sexual assault cases. The Supreme Court of Canada has said a lot in the last year about sexual assault cases, and they should have taken this opportunity to say just one more thing to try and make the process of trials more fair, more understandable, and more reasonable for all of the parties involved, particularly given their stressful nature. This was a real missed opportunity that leads to an unaddressed conflict in the law. You're watching Cases That Should Have Gone to the Supreme Court of Canada, but didn't. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Cases That Should Have Gone to the Supreme Court of Canada, but didn't. I'm Kyla Lee at Acumen Law Corporation. Thank you to Brazen Bull Creative for putting together these videos. Like, subscribe, share with your friends, and tune in next week for another exciting episode.